I'm Blake Newman. I'm Bree Ripley. And this is the Agile Podcast, where we explore the stories and people behind Agile Web Solutions. And today, we start a series on Drupal, specifically Drupal 7, which is reaching its end of life, mm, eventually. Yeah, eventually. Originally, it was scheduled to retire in November 2020. That date moved to 2021. Just recently, it was announced that the expiration date was rescheduled again to November of 2022. And when I say that a piece of software like Drupal is reaching its end of life, I know that the organization I work for needs to upgrade the software to a newer version or perhaps migrate to an entirely different platform. It's kind of like when your PC or laptop gets too old and you need to replace it. You can upgrade to a newer version of Windows or move on over to a Mac instead. Right. But moving out of Drupal is a heck of a lot more work than replacing your computer. 100%. I remember what it took to rebuild a website for a large public radio station, and it took something like over a year and around a million dollars. Migrating out of Drupal 7 is like rebuilding the website all over again. And that could be expensive and extremely time consuming. Organizations also need to make some decisions like whether to stay in Drupal and upgrade to versions D9 or D10 or go somewhere else entirely like WordPress. Okay, okay. Before we get into a decision science exercise. Right. Let's just start with explaining exactly what Drupal is. So Drupal is a web content management system, or CMS for short. You can think of it like a web operating system. It's the software that powers websites. A CMS allows people to manage the page templates, functionality, and permissions of a website. You might be familiar with other web content management systems like WordPress. Ah, now that's a big one. Or Blake, what's another one? Well, you may have heard of um, Wix or Squarespace or perhaps even Joomla. Yeah, Joomla. (laughs) Right. But back to Drupal. It became really popular around 2009 after the Obama transition team migrated WhiteHouse.gov to Drupal. We worked a lot with the Obama White House on other websites like Data.gov, Performance.gov, USA Spending, and Restore the Gulf. We built all those websites in Drupal. Wow. Yeah, so Drupal is used by a lot of government agencies, universities, nonprofits, and associations. But on its most basic level, Drupal is a CMS. A famous yeah. CMS. Well, yeah, it is a famous CMS. So, so here's Shafali, a project manager at Agilina. Drupal fits the bill of websites which are predominantly content-based. The primary responsibility of the website is just to give out information. For example, it could be news sites that have a lot of information. It could be personal blog, wherein you are writing or cataloging your thoughts or your travels or whatever. It also can be a lot of government websites because their primary job is to be able to give the public data out to the public through their websites. And those things, government websites, they put out a lot of content. Yeah, a lot. So I want to introduce you to Gordon. He works for Agilina and is a certified Drupal Grand Master. In fact, he's a double Grand Master. There's only like 35 people on the planet who hold dual Grand Masters. It's a big deal. He stumbled on Drupal during the recession of 2008-2009. Someone had offered him a job, but asked if he knew Drupal. Because of the recession, I had been laid off. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I know Drupal. I had, you know, maybe a week's worth of time with it and stuff like that. But I think that's how every Drupal developer gets started. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> but of course, <laughs> uh, now he's a Drupal expert. Uh, he eventually worked on a migration from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7 for a big magazine publisher in Chicagoland. I took over building that site. And at that time, th- that site was in Drupal 6. And it was it was really a large site and really cumbersome. It took a lot of server power to keep that thing up and running. So I was part of the migration for that to Drupal 7. That was in 2012. And what Gordon says about that migration... To coin a phrase, the gnashing of teeth. (laughs) (laughs) So it seems like migrating is really complicated. And there are many different factors as to why it's complicated. There's a lot of what we call in the industry technical debt. That's unfin. Sorry, just reacting to technical debt. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Whoa. Yeah. That's unfinished business, code that was rapidly thrown together without a lot of thought or documentation, or just short-term hacks that were supposed to be rewritten later. It all needs to be untangled, sorted out, and refactored before migration. Then there's the custom code. So the custom code is where Drupal migration can get extremely hairy. And to understand why, we have to look at three parts of Drupal. One part is the Drupal core, the out-of-box functionality that you get when you download and install it for the first time. Here's Gordon again. It's got a authentication system right out of the box. It's got a couple of different content types. Like if you wanted to, you know, be a blogger, you could stand this thing up in five to 10 minutes and off you, off you go. Okay, but maybe you want something a bit more complicated. Yep. The second part is what we call contributed modules. These are the things that extend Drupal functionality. They're written and maintained by a community of volunteers who all use Drupal for a living. The beauty of the open source uh, community is that there's something like 30,000 modules out there that, you know, the best thing about the community is like, if you've, you want to do something, pretty much someone out there has tried to do it as well. It's really rare that you find something where you're all alone out there. Yeah, but not unheard of, uh, which brings me to custom code, the third component. This is a unique piece of code that's written exclusively for one particular website, and no other website on the planet uses the same code. So when it breaks or needs to get migrated, there's nobody from the Drupal community who can help you. It falls squarely on your shoulders. The more custom code in a Drupal website, the more complicated, costly and time consuming to migrate. No one can help you? Are you sure? Well, you could pay a company that specializes in maintaining outdated Drupal 7 sites. It's not impossible to make changes to a D7 site after it reaches end of life. It's just not very practical. Oh, and did I mention it's expensive? No, but I I assumed that was the case. But let's say the organization that I work for wants to stay in Drupal 7, but we don't have a budget. Well, if your website is hosted on anything other than a dedicated server, or say a computer sitting in a closet in your office, (laughs) um, or in a cave, well then (laughs) the company that hosts your website will want to update the server operating system or the version of PHP. And just so we're clear on PHP, it's a server programming language. Once they do that, then suddenly all the applications on that server, including Drupal, will need to be made forward compatible. Ah. Okay, so the Drupal Association is basically saying that Drupal 7 will no longer be updated. You can't make it forward compatible. You won't be able to keep up with the new versions of PHP. Right. The same is true for things like security patches. So if you don't migrate out of D7, then your website can suddenly break down and there's no way to bring it back up. So it's like if your car engine broke down on the highway and your flashy vintage vehicle had no parts available, or maybe some parts in Europe or something... And if your website is mission critical to your organization, then this becomes, well, a disaster. Total crisis. And nobody in the community is able to help. Okay, so moving out of one version of Drupal is, and I quote, the gnashing of teeth. But staying in an old version of Drupal could cause a disaster. Wow, well, I'm feeling really good so far, Blake. Huh, I see your point. None of these options are easy, but you have to do something if you're running Drupal 7. So, Bree, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. How has the COVID-19 pandemic affected your work? It's affected every facet of my work, from the types of global health projects that I now help manage on the communications end, to big research paper launches getting shuffled around or delayed, to the way we measure what digital marketing success looks like, which... As you might imagine, it looks a lot different than when we're not experiencing an international health crisis. Ha, huh, right. So, well, you know, there's definitely a lot going on right now. And moving to a new version of Drupal isn't going to be the top priority of any company. Plus, since Drupal is maintained by volunteers, some of whom have lost their jobs or just have a lot of other things on their minds right now, mm. they're not really available to help make the move out of D7. Here's Gordon again. Because of the COVID-19 crisis, lots of businesses have had issues with, you know, whether it's finances or developers or their workforce is now, you know, scattered. Right. So the Drupal people extended Drupal 7 retirement because, you know, life is pretty chaotic right now. Right. And the last thing people need right now is to worry about their Drupal 7 website suddenly crashing in the middle of a pandemic. 
All that said, Drupal 7's life has been extended all the way to November of 2022. So for an organization whose website is powered by D7... It gives them time to think about uh, moving out of Drupal 7 into whichever technology is best suited for their requirements. That's Shafali again. It also gives people uh, some time to... I mean, some organizations are fair, have a fairly small IT budget, so it kind of gives them two financial years to plan out their... IT budget and to plan out for this massive take. Good news, right? But do you remember the three parts of Drupal we were talking about? <laughs> this is the pop quiz. Let's see if I can get this. We're thinking about number one, the core. Number two, contributed modules. And three, custom code. Ding, ding, ding. Right. This this extension of the end of life, we're just talking about the core. Shafali argues you should still move on as soon as possible. The urgency of going out of Drupal still remains because when Drupal announces that its end of life is going to be extended by a year, they are just talking about Drupal core. It's, it's obviously the heart of the application, but there are N number of contrib modules that you use to actually power your website. So even though they have extended the course end of life, there's no guarantee or incentive for the contrib module maintainers to continue to maintain D7, yet, you know, come up with a D8 version and also come up with a D9 version. And this is really important. Your core may still be maintained until 2022. But Drupal is an open source project, mm. and much of the functionality comes from user contributed modules. I would still advise all the clients that we have, or any conversations that we have, that they should try and move out of D7 as quickly as they can. And what about the custom code? Well, custom code is unique to your organization and its website. You have to rewrite all that code yourself. You can't leverage modules written by the community if one of your developers wrote some highly customized code exclusively for your website. Yikes. Yeah, so the urgency is still there to move out of Drupal 7 as soon as possible because time is still ticking away. Ticking it does. And Blake, you have a little ticker on your website. And right now, while we're recording this... How many days until we have uh, D7 coming to an end? Huh, good question. Let me take a look. So if you go to agilina.com, you'll see the ticker at 844 days, which is a little more than, let me do my math, two years away after they set the clock back a year. But when should you move? I mean, if you're not moving right now, you should really be thinking about it and you should be thinking agile. Right. And there are three rules to agile software development. Rule number one, we may have a general idea of the content code and functionality that we need to migrate, but we won't know all the details up front. We won't have perfect knowledge or information going into this. Rule number two, whatever details or requirements we collected up front are likely to change over the course of the migration. In fact, they're probably guaranteed to change. And rule number three, we'll never have enough time or money to do everything we want to do, especially if you want to change things and, and enhance things and maybe mess with the design. So we have to prioritize and focus on the most important things before time and money runs out. So in short, embrace the change, figure out what is most important and have crystal clear priorities. Exactly. And remember, this is an iterative process. Right. This is probably a great time to think about the purpose of your website and the needs of your target audience. Yep. We also need to keep in mind that Drupal or any other content management system or software component has planned obsolescence. One version ends, another one begins. You have to move on. You have to migrate. Okay. So this is definitely an iterative process. Every migration, you'll learn something new. You get more feedback, more data. You'll make another migration, upgrade, or enhancement someday down the line. Bree, when you have to migrate out of a CMS at your job, what do you think about? Oi. <laughs> I mean, the thing that I think about is how many hours I will need to spend learning that new CMS and understanding all of its particularities, idiosyncrasies, and most importantly, its limitations. I mean, honestly, I think about how much time I won't be able to focus on 
anything else except for learning all of it. Huh. Well, then maybe you should stay in future versions of Drupal, if you like. And if you don't want to learn a new CMS, then that could flatten the learning curve. And in the next few weeks, we'll talk about how Drupal migrations will be easier in the future. So D7 is ending, but there are other options. Yes, maybe you want to migrate to WordPress or something even simpler. Maybe you don't need a CMS at all. Whoa, but if you're running Drupal 7, you're going to have to make some decisions and soon. Right, and there's a lot that goes into that. A migration may take a few weeks, a few months, or even a few years, depending on your site. That's a lot of time, and dealing with your website may not even be your full-time job. It might just be an additional duty on top of all the other things you have to do. If you have a dedicated web team, they may even have their hands full just maintaining the current website as it is. Or you might be thinking that if you have to redo your website, maybe you should take the opportunity to redesign it or improve the functionality, which will add even more pressure to the time and budget. This could be a great opportunity to rethink your digital strategy entirely. So stay tuned. We'll be talking about the alternatives to Drupal 7. What a migration looks like. What it could cost and the factors that go into that cost. And how to migrate in an agile way. So smash that subscribe button on the Agile Podcast, <laughs> on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And please leave a review while you're at it. Thanks for listening, and until next time. Goodbye. Talk to you soon. The Agile Podcast is produced by Agilina, a DC-based web development company. To learn more about Agilina, you can visit our website, agilina.com or send us an email to results at agilina.com that's a-g-i-l-e-a-n-a dot com I can't stop thinking about technical debt <laughs> <laughs> technical debt you gotta refactor it man it's like you need to get a FICO score on your technical debt whoa this is <laughs> so much it sounds like Oh, just another layer of cortisol. Yeah, I know. What's your debt score at this point? <laughs> God. Yuck. <laughs>